What's going on YouTube? Tom here. And first off, before I start today's video, I just want to say thank you all so much for 300 subscribers. I woke up to that this morning. I was happy as hell when I saw that. As some of y'all, I should probably don't know because I probably never said this, but YouTube is one of the first things I end up checking in the morning. I saw I had 300. I was happy. Smile on my face. Thank y'all so much for your continued support. It really means a lot to me. So, now on to the content of today's vlog. That is the new Corvette ZR1. Now, I made a video back in May about it, and I said it's pretty much going to be the most important new sports car in the coming years here. So, now, GM, at the time of filming this video, is set to release a video. It hasn't been released yet, but it, by the time this video goes live, it will. So, I'm going off of the leaked car and driver article, not off of the GM release at the time of making this video. And, so let's talk about what we know about it, and then why I'm actually very slightly disappointed with it. But I'm not gonna say fully, by a long stretch of the imagination. In fact, I'm still excited for it. So, first of all, the ZR1. As you know, it's gonna be the new top tier Corvette, kinda succeeding the Z06. Just like it did with the C6 generation. The Z06 came out first, pretty much a year after the new body style, new Corvette, and then, then after that, you get the ZR1, which is kind of the new all-out sports car version. It's really more of a supercar than a sports car. So, first of all, let's just say this, it's, it's going to get compared to the old ZR1, this being the C6. Now, the C6 ZR1 is already one of my dream cars, it always has been since the day it came out, and I really hope to own one in the next few years. In fact, I'm even thinking once, that's probably going to be the next car I add to my collection after the Mustang. It's probably a C6 ZR1. So naturally, I'm looking pretty hard at the new ZR1 because I want to make, see if it lives up to its reputation. Now, first of all, according to Car and Driver, it is going to get this new LT5 V8, which that got leaked way back in the day. They said there's going to be a new engine. Now, the rumor at the time was it was going to be a dual overhead cam for engine, basically to take over the LT engine, like it'd be an almost clean sheet design, essentially, to take over from the old engines. Now, and the reality is, it's no, it's still going to be a push rod, which actually a lot of people were theorizing that, so all of y'all that commented on that video back in the day, back in May, and said it's going to be a push rod due to height constraints, y'all were right, it is true, it is going to be a push rod, and for that reason, I'm slightly disappointed in that, because, simply put, that's... I was like, oh, wait a minute, the original ZR1 from the C4 generation was an overhead cam, and I thought GM was going to move into the 21st century here and get away from push rods, but, oh well, push rods are still a thing, and it's still a massive amount of power. 750 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. So, that's another, that's positive of it, but let's talk about the LT5 and what it does get over the LT4. It is, in fact, going to get a larger supercharger. How much larger? They haven't said an official displacement yet, but let's put it this way. The Z06 has a 1.7 liter TVS supercharger, and then the LT5, or not the LT, the LS9 that was in the old ZR1 had a 2.3. So that should tell you right there about how much I would predict them giving. I mean, any bigger and it wouldn't it'd be too tall for the hood. And of course, that's pretty competitive size for most blowers. So then, the other thing it's going to get is a dual injection setup. Dual injection being it has both direct and port injection, and it can switch back and forth between them depending on the loading conditions, how much power is required, whether it's starting up, warming up, all the other good stuff. Basically, Toyota did it with Lexus back in the day, and it's now trickling down to all of the more basic Toyotas. Basic. And then Ford did it on the new Mustang, and now GM is doing it on the 2019 ZR1. And I predict in 2019, if there is going to be this so-called Camaro facelift that they're talking about, my prediction is if it do, if it gets a new motor or even a revised motor, it'll be an LT2. That's what I'm nicknaming it. I don't, don't hold me to that one. And it probably will get the dual injection as well. It's the way the industry's going because it it 
raises the thermal efficiency a lot and allows for better gas mileage and higher horsepower. So, anyway, Corvette's got it now, and I, like I said, it's going to come down cheaper into the Corvette range, so lower the Corvette range, cheaper, whatever you want to say. The Stingray might get it in the future if they keep the Stingray. So, then the next big thing with the Corvette is the transmissions. Now, this is another reason I'm slightly disappointed. It gets the 7-speed manual, which is great. They didn't, Corvette's sticking true to its roots and keeping the manual alive. But, it still gets the 8-speed. And why am I disappointed by that? Now, don't, now, first of all, I rode in our family friend's Z, Z51 Stingray with the 8-speed. And I'm just gonna let you know, it is enough, it shifts quick enough to basically give you whiplash. It's, there is no complaints here from that 8-speed. But, it's like, why would they continue to use the 8-speed when they've already come up with the vastly improved 10-speed for the Camaro? And honestly, give it a couple more years if they decide to put that 10-speed in the ZL1 1LE or this alleged future Z28. It has honest potential to be faster than the ZR1. Because they'll probably do the LT5 with that. So, for that reason, I'm slightly disappointed. Now, don't get me wrong, like I said, that 8 speed's enough to give you whiplash in most cars. It's going to be plenty quick in the ZR1. But, yeah, I think GM could have done a little bit better. And then, kind of the final thing about it is the styling. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad looking car, but the problem is the, Z the C7 got criticized for looking like a Ferrari in the beginning. And I still kind of think that. It still does look a little bit like a Ferrari. But now, with this one, it looks almost like a Porsche. Hear me out. That front end and that wing legitimately look like they got grafted from a, a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. I, just, I, I don't care for the looks of that. Now, the wing, luckily, you can get one with a smaller wing. I'm waiting for pictures to come out of that. I really can't wait to see that just because it'll actually be a good looking car. Now that that's functional of course to add downforce at speed. And as for that rear as for that front end, it's because they had to add the extra intercoolers. Or heat exchangers, I guess is what they're calling them. Basically, Corvette had that big problem on the Z06 with the heating issue. The Z06 was known to overheat when driven hard and they probably knew that about the ZR1, like, it's gonna be someone's track toy at the end of the day. It's not necessary, even though most owners are really gonna use them as a street car, they're gonna drive them to their accounting job or their CEO position and park in a covered parking spot. At the end of the day, at least one owner is gonna track it and they're going to try to drive the hell out of it. So, that front end was for practicality and it looks like it's gonna add a lot of airflow to that car. But, Let's face it, I still think the C6 is better looking. I'm, I'm I guess I'm stuck in the early 2000s. Because, trust me, the Camaro taillights on the C7 just, they don't look as good as the timeless circular taillights on the C6 ZR1. But, if I had the money, and I wasn't interested in buying a C6 ZR1, I would actually honestly consider this the C7 ZR1. Now, honestly, the main competitors for that, you're, gonna, you're looking at various 911s, which is probably going to be definitely faster than the 911s in its price range, and it's going to be equally as fast as 911s that cost closer to $200,000. You got the GTR, of course, which was always the competitor for the original C6 ZR1. I shouldn't say original, because it wasn't the first, but the C6 ZR1. And of course you got things like, you know, BMW M4, and you got the AM, various AMG Mercedes line, mainly the AMG GT line. And then of course, got a lot of other things like the Shelby GT350R, even though that's going about to go out of production for 2018. Although you do have the future alleged Cobra and or GT500 that's also possibly in the works. So, we'll have to wait and see how any of these competitors stack up against it, but I think I'm, I'm pretty excited for it because it's going to set some honest, amazing lap times, and it's going to set the world on fire just like the old one did. Anyway, let me know in the comments below 
what you all think about the new ZR1. Do you think it is seriously going to be an amazing car, or do you think it's going to be a bust? If you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe. Help this channel get to 500 subscribers. And we're going to add something to that one. Help this channel get to 500 subscribers by the end of this year. I would love it if I could wake up on January 1st, 2018 and to 500 subscribers. Take care, have a good day. Thank you.